Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Welcome back to the YouTube channel. Uh, make sure to like the video and subscribe if you want to. We are trying to hit 500 subscribers before the end of the year. Now, yesterday, obviously I talked about Aaron Cresswell, but yesterday we also got the confirmation of the news that not only is Joseph Anang uh, getting released, uh, but Angelo Ogbonna uh, will be released from West Ham United and... Uh, this is the farewell Angelo Ogbonna video. Um, Angelo Ogbonna joined this club in 15-16 season. Uh, the same transfer window where we signed Manuel Lanzini on a loan to buy. Uh, Mikel Antonio. Dimitri Payet. Uh, Pedro Obiang. No. Obiang, no. I, th I think we signed Obiang in that one. Uh, we got another loan from Carl Jenkinson. I don't know whether, I think, yeah, I think Zarate stayed for like three games. But that was a good transfer window at the time. One of the better transfer windows in our history, in our recent history, recent history. And um, Obon has been a solid player throughout. A solid player. I'm not going to say he hasn't had bad games. He definitely has. Definitely, definitely has. But he's had more good than bad for me. Uh, one of the more intelligent defenders. He he is one of the more def uh, he like in typical Italian defender fashion. He's more the stylistic player of he will grab you sort of thing, and at points I would have generally would have rather played him than they have again this season. Uh, after a couple of disaster classes this season because he was his legs were officially like done out. He did have a masterclass against Arsenal away. Him and Mavropanos did well to. Keep away the chances. Keep away as more and more chances that Arsenal could have created because Arsenal actually should have probably finished, um, but a lot of their chances in that game. But Ogbonna deserved to win something at this club. He's one of the players that was here for a long time and deserved to win something at this club. Um, he wanted to win something here. He wanted to retire here. I don't think he's going to retire. I would love if he just retired and went into a you know, like in a in the background at the academy, maybe stayed in East London to like you know, be in the background and stuff, but he can do what he wants. I suggest he takes a holiday. Um, retire, you've done enough in your career, but maybe he wants to retire in Italy. Obviously, buying him from Juventus as well as a statement because obviously he wanted to go and play, uh, have more game time uh, because Chiellini and Bonucci were right there. Uh, played with some great players. Was gutted that he didn't make the last Euro squad for Italy. I believe he should have made it. He had a good season that season. In the lockdown seasons, you probably saw him at his best, the 15-16 season as well. Obviously, scoring that goal against Liverpool in the FA Cup at Upton Park was one of the huge highlights. And speaking of Liverpool, it was very unfortunate when he got injured in that 3-2 win because we were we had something there with him and Zuma when we were good at like defending deep and hitting teams at a counter-attack. Um, him and Zuma were superb you know, together at the time. An intelligent defender, and like you, you can't play high up the pitch with him nowadays. But you could have back then. He was actually all right on the ball. He had pace back then. When we first signed him, he was a he was a guy who had quite a bit of recovery pace, decent on the ball, um, just overall intelligent, could read the game as well. Uh, but never there was a period of time like under Bilic and Pellegrini where we probably couldn't find the right partner for him. Uh, we were unfortunately surrounding him with very bad defenders. He's done a lot for this club, and I appreciate him no matter what. Um, good luck to him. Uh, yeah, and when we watch the Conference League uh, stuff back, the first person you see with his hands like this is Angelo Bonner. The camera pans to him, just running. Um, great celebrations, embraced the club. Had a lot of history here, like, um, part of some good teams, played with some great players. Like, his all-time West Ham 11 would look good. His all-time West Ham 11 would look really good. Um, obviously, had an argument with Mark Noble in the 1920 season because both of them are very passionate about the club and he showed that he cared. In that 1920 season, we were going through a rough patch where the manager was shit. A lot of the players played like they didn't care about the club. However, Angelo Bono was one of the players that you could look and be like, he cares. He cares about the fact that we're in a relegation battle and the fact that this is not good enough. 
because a lot of players played like they didn't back then. But I wish Angelo Bonnet all the best. And uh, it's going to be weird to not see him. It was weird not seeing Noble, weird not seeing Declan Rice, but it's going to be weird to not see Angelo Bonner at this club. However, he has not played as of recent that much. Um, he got a good send-off against Luton, and yeah, good luck to him. Make sure to like the video, make sure to subscribe if you're new. Uh, I don't know if I'm going, going to be streaming tonight. Uh, I might not be able to get a video out tomorrow because I will be out um but I'll try and record something in advance if there's news. And if there is news and I tomorrow, you're going to get a video late at, like, probably in the late hours. Same with Saturday as well. I'm not sure about Saturday either. But we're trying to upload. We're trying to stream as much as possible. We're on the road to 500 subscribers. Uh, social media is over in the description if you want to follow me in the email for the inquiries. I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.